RCR's second car giveaway, the 450 horsepower BMW 135i M Sport, ends this Wednesday. So click the link in the description to get entered. All you have to do is buy a mug and get entered. Turbocharge mug, turbocharge car. Ends this Wednesday. Click the link in the description. But enough about a 450 horsepower Bimmer. Let's talk about what's behind it. Behind the power, behind all the flashy cars that RCR has done, behind the shit boxes and everything else. In the background of all of our videos for the past four years or so, behind all the speed, behind all the classics, and behind all the jokes, back there, out of focus, sat a humble little wagon. This is her story. Our camera car is a 2004 Subaru Forester. Base model with a cloth interior, no heated seats, no sunroof, stamped steel wheels, and unpainted bumpers. She has a noisy lifter, a weeping valve cover, a check engine light throwing EVAP codes, electrical tape over the CEL because my county has no emissions regulations. I removed the roof rails so I can tell my beige Subaru apart from all the other beige Subarus. A Subaru calls this color Sierra Gold. That's why she's called Goldie, but come on. This color is beige. It's a beige station wagon. Sierra Gold. But without Goldie, we couldn't have filmed off-road, crashed through the snow in Muncie, Indiana. She has the ground clearance to jump curbs in Toronto and the mid-range torque to joust with Philly traffic. She spent nights in long-term economy parking at PHL when we escaped to warmer climates. She served Pennsylvania, and fittingly, Pennsylvania is taking her. The rust, well, this rust, my car is returning to the earth. I keep her waxed, vacuumed, and detailed, but Pennsylvania will take the angel share. So, should you buy a second generation Forester now in 2021? Is this a good car? That depends who you are. Are you a gearhead or a normie? If you're a gearhead, you'll love the engine's enthusiastic growl. If you're a normie, you'll hate the noise. Why does it make that noise? The engine is annoying. It's the idle, it sounds like an oil drum full of driveway gravel. If you're a gearhead, you'll love the cheap parts, the cheap parts for a simple engine line, which spanned multiple platforms. If you're a normie, You'll hate the power of a four-cylinder with the fuel economy of a V8. If you're a gearhead, you'll love this basic all-wheel drive system that splits power 50-50 front and rear all the time. And if, and if you have a manual, that's, yeah, if you have a manual, it'll split at 50-50 all the time. And then you can do four-wheel drifts all day in the snow, controlled drifts. Just rev, rev up the 5,000, dump the clutch, and blow white rooster tails all over those Jeep Wranglers. I am a Subi, and I am a winter god. If you're a normie, you'll love it. It's good in the snow. If you're a gearhead, you'll love that every problem with these cars has been documented. There's YouTube how-to videos and detailed form threads which explain when you need to perform preventative maintenance and how to do it. If you're a normie, you're going to go, uh, $2,000 for new head gaskets, but it only has 99,000 miles. I bought it at 80,000 miles, and now it's at 99,000 miles, but it's practically new. Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. That line. From a marketing standpoint, it's brilliant. Subaru passed on the maintenance costs to its customers. Dick move, but people loved them for it, didn't they? Oh, they knew the EJ25s had head gasket problems. 
They knew they cheaped out with the graphite-coated head gaskets and only the, the turbos got multi-layer steel. They knew these things will, you know, they just kind of weep oil after a while. They know, they know they run rough. But love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. So you have people complaining that their Subarus fall apart. And at the same time, other people say this thing went for 400,000 miles. And yes, these will go for 400,000 miles if you take care of it. Now, one of the reasons is you can have this engine out. Now, I've, two different mechanics had boasted to me that if you give me help, you lay out all my tools and you don't bug me and that phone doesn't ring, I'll have this engine out in 45 minutes. Justin Kramer from Fuel Injection Sucks. Uh, said that the, the Subarus are one of the most ethically designed vehicles for mechanics to work on. Spark plugs notwithstanding on double overhead cam models, but still, they don't bury that much. You can see what you're doing in here. They're a little bit tighter on the newer ones, but nothing much has changed. But that line though, love, it, what's, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. They've encouraged people to do preventative maintenance, and they built up this brand identity. And if vapes and if, you know, raspberry flavored vapes came along with it, well, so be it. Highs in the mid 40s. Southwest winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. Sunday night, mostly cloudy. A chance of rain through 2 a.m. A chance of snow between 8 p.m. and 2 a.m. Then a chance of rain and snow showers after 2 a.m. Little or no snow accumulation. Rainfall amounts less than a tenth of an inch. It costs so little to add the weather ban option on modern head units. And it is such a thoughtful little piece of tech that Subaru wanted you to know or, or cared uh, about you enough to give you accurate weather information. Yes, you can use your phone. Yes, you can get an app, but maybe it's more of an emotional touch to know that there is a mature group of adults that just care about the weather and all they want to tell you is accurate weather information all the time. Maybe it's me thinking more about my father, how he always liked to listen to KYW. 10 cigs, uh, news for Philly. <laughs> what is it? KYW radio 1060. And he loved the weather on that. And this is sort of like that all the time. Man, a weather band radio. It's brilliant. I, I, I don't have the, the tray in here. So I guess before I give it to Corey, we have to take this off unless you want to f discover how to remove all this stuff and then put the uh, parcel tray back in here. It's just sitting on a shelf. Vinyl inserts. I appreciate the offer that Subaru said, we're going to make these seats fancy, but don't ever do this. If you're going to do cloth seats, do the entire seat in cloth. Because what does happens? Point the camera down here. Look at that junk. Ugh. All the butt all the butt moving stuff in and out cracks the seat so i have like glue and stuff holding it together find most old subarus that have the vinyl inserts they're all wrecked right here because the vinyl can't stretch over the years but cloth can that's the dumbest that's one of the dumbest things they did in the interior vinyl inserts on all models this guy brilliant i understand that some people like to remove this entire trim piece and they get their triple gauges to make this car look like it. Let's get some more light in here. Does that help? Not really. To make this car look like a Forester XT. But why give up the sweet little cubby hole here? I would put my wallet in here so I wouldn't have to sit on it. Um, during RCR, all my notebooks would go in here as well as my mileage log. And... Also, if you put your gloves in here, your HVAC ducts down here run right underneath it. So in the wintertime, whatever gloves or hat you put in here become warm. And you get out of the, cold, out of the car on a cold and windy day, and you put on a warm hat, and you put on warm gloves. It's 
It's very sensuous. Two sunglasses holders, one there, one there. Uh, I would keep my clip-ons up here. I would keep my regular sunglasses right here. Clip-ons for medium light, traditional sunglasses for heavy light. Who's giving you two sunglasses holders? Because we understand there's a difference between daytime and not quite dusk, or the time sometimes you need to wear two pairs of sunglasses because you're driving right into the sun. Genius. HVAC, simple design. How hot do you want it? How hard do you want it? And where do you want it? These are the push-pull wires for the how hot do you want it. They crisscross underneath the car. So the ones on the left are controlled over here on the right. You, If you want to put an aftermarket radio, you're going to have to remove that metal wire that goes around the loop at the end because that's what ties your dash to the car. That's the final thing. You have to pop this little plastic pin back here and that removes this sort of bicycle cable that controls how hot do you want it and where do you want it on the other side. That's the final thing you have to do and it's annoying as crap because those little pins like to break off and in fact the one on the other side the only thing that's the one on the other side the only thing that's holding this on and it does work is friction. So uh, if you really wanted to secure that thing in there you'd have to like get a, a needle really hot and then like right through to put a pin in there because they like snap in and I snapped that one thing off, pulling it off too hard the first time. So the only thing that's holding that, that little loop of metal on the little tong on the end of it is just, it's positioned just right. Lumbar support, man. Standard. Any manufacturer these days that doesn't do standard lumbar support hates you. Ben, your rental Colorado lumbar support? Uh, no, thanks General Motors. Yeah, come on. Is it that hard to put a little lever right here and a little frickin' pad so my back don't hurt. We have an aging population. Subaru was doing this 20 years ago. You of your tools. <laughs> oh, be, like, yeah. I'm telling you, because that's the shit the fans like. They really? want to know more yeah, about yeah. you. I would love to take a photo of you being under the dashboard filming, and I just want a photo of you because your body's like... Are you looking at my ass? <laughs> Are you looking at my ass? Are you looking at my ass? Are you looking at... <laughs> I'll t All right, so like me and Corey, like we were, I was laughing about making a porno, but the porno is just me, like some other dude lying on a bed, like just on his back. And I'm like squatting over him reverse style, like no pants, like shirt on, like maybe a hoodie and like a hat and gloves, but no pants and just my ass in his face. And the whole thing is just... Are you looking at my, like his face is there. And I'm like angrily going, are you looking at my ass? Are you looking at my ass? Are you looking at my ass? Stop looking at my ass. Stop looking at my ass. And he's like asleep. <laughs> no, he's awake. He's just standing there. Maybe he has swimming goggles on for no reason. <laughs> are you looking at my ass? Somebody animate that. Are you looking at my ass? <laughs> yeah, Adler, go animate that. <laughs> Are you looking at my ass? <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> what was I? Oh yeah, so this. Other cars do it too, but this is a gigantic resistor. These are your DRLs for a Forester. This is the plug that goes into them. They had to put DRLs in there, probably for Canada, but all it was is a gigantic resistor on your low beam circuit. So when you turn the car on, your headlights would always be on, but that thing just gets super hot. They were just limiting the amount of voltage that goes to your headlight bulbs. So what does that do? Where's your headlight bulbs out faster? And if you want decent light, you're putting silver stars in here, with, which run hotter and then they're gonna burn out faster. And those things are like 40 or $50 a bulb sometimes. So if you're in the United States, you don't need DRLs. And if you're on, like when I'm on the highway, I'm putting my headlights on anyway, cause people are idiots. But during the day, I don't have them on unless I'm in a construction zone. So half the time I'm just tooling around town, I don't need my headlights on. So I just pull this cable, you're, you're good. No DRLs.
So you see all this brown fuzz right here on top of the AC condenser? That's the AC condenser eating itself because there's a little electromagnetic, and this is just how uh, AC condensers work. There's a little electromagnetic, uh, electromagnet and a clutch in there, just like a clutch on your car. When you press that button, it energizes the electromagnet, pulls your clutch in, and then starts this thing spinning. And of course it needs that because your belt is going around your compressor all the time. So mine started wearing out. And the, uh, the AC was clicking on and off. And that's usually the sign that the clutch material in there is getting thin. Did I replace a $200 AC compressor? Nope. I just drank a beer. And then cut the beer can up into little strips, shoved them inside the forks that hold the, uh, that sort of space, the clutch, and I just spaced the clutch closer to the magnet. So now it works. But now we're getting to the point where I think I wore away most of the clutch material and it's metal on metal in there. But it still works. It's gonna go anytime. Oh. Yeah. Area, and then it, like, it doesn't like that. So the second gen Fozzies have a hill hold feature and they're down here, which is disabled. The hill hold feature is pur purely mechanical and there it is. Uh, I need a pointy stick. Long and pointy, like a screwdriver. Use your finger. Use your finger. <laughs> Thank you. This is your hill hold cable. It goes to this pivot right here, and there's a brake line that goes. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It goes down there, around there. I knew where it was. It was like an inline cylinder. It wasn't a master cylinder. This down here is Subaru's hill hold feature. It is a second brake cylinder, almost like a second master cylinder, hooked to this cable, and then there's this pivot. It adds brake pressure and holds your wheels on hills but it isn't intelligent. It doesn't know if the car is on the flat or on a hill or on a slight hill or on a big hill. It will hold your car in, as long as it's in first gear on a hill. Actually, I'm wrong. As long as it's in first gear, it, there will always be a click and a pull. It's very nice except when it fails. And usually, if you're ever in a situation where my brakes are locked up and I don't know why, give this cable a wiggle and your car should break free. I didn't know this, and uh, I called Moyer's Car Care, and they sent the rollback out, and they had to put trays. They have special trays under each wheel to drag this thing. Thank goodness I was on a dirt lot, and they could drag it up on the rollback. Like, all the wheels are locked up. And then once we got it up there, we started messing around. I'm like, wait a minute. Because I looked on the forums, I pulled this and the car just broke loose. Like nothing was wrong. And I'm like, that's not going to happen again. So I'm going to open this all the way with a zip tie and then just unhook this completely. And now it's just a traditional uh, manual car. And you have to hold the car with your e-brake like you do, like you should be doing anyway. I like what they were doing. They were trying to help you. But just like with the DRLs, kind of primitive tech but thankfully all you need is a screwdriver unhook that zip tie that thing open so it can never close again and you're golden you want your uh, single jingle EJ25 to sound like a 2.5 RS there you go <laughs> now now you're gonna hear all the induction noises and everything your air filters there nothing's gonna happen you sound like you have a tuned car now if you do that just so you know as Ben pointed out Toyota Toyota. Subaru, did these, these wood pieces aren't standard. It's just when we had a tripod ratchet it strapped down in the back for filming, uh, we needed some more support, so there's wood there. You get storage inside your spare tire. Subaru thought, well, we're not letting this, pl we're not letting this extra space go to waste. We'll give you a little organizer that fits in here for your extra things. 
Like a nice airbag when you... When someone else locks their keys in the car. Like this that I have to put back in. This is the parcel shelf that goes in under your head unit. And then your tool kit fits in there. There's a poncho and there's other stuff that rattles around. And when you get rid of your car, you have tum. 04 Subaru Hill Hold Jam Nuts. Oh yeah, they were the jam nuts for my hill hold that I just kept in there. Are that opens. So how do you say goodbye to something you you feel you've had forever? We gave our last camera car to a college student who really needed a ride. Remember that? The Honda Fit? And we hope Silicon Sally has served him well. But as for Goldie, well, we can't, in good conscience, sell her. It's simply a matter of principle. The pinch welds are all gone. It's so rust-eaten underneath that you can't jack it up by its body anymore. You can only jack it up from its suspension. And that rust, like the coal veins in Centralia, are getting pretty close to the Ashland suspension joints. Even if any potential new owner signed up for the risks willingly, it's hard enough out there in these beefaroni streets without stacking the deck against a well-meaning stranger. It's hard not to get at least a little sentimental about a car I've owned for a little over a presidential cycle, even as the stress is piled up with each new sound that I discover. There you are, listening to a podcast, skipping past the Zip Recruiter ad, and you hear a rattle that's different from the other rattles <laughs> in an unknown place, and you're already balancing the, balancing the ledger in your mind. The money's sneaking out of your bank account like teenagers breaking curfew, and you realize this car is no longer worth the trouble. That for as much as I might want to keep this car on the road, I also don't. I want to move on to something different. Because a car without problems is its own excitement. Subaru Forester. Bust out the sunscreen and the trekking poles. We're going hiking up in Jim Thorpe. Now, is this one of the greatest cars of all time and the pinnacle of automotive manufacturing? No. But is this one of the best cars we've ever driven in the history of RCR? Also, no. This is a little billy goat that does everything kind of okay and nothing really great. Well, apart from being a tough little son of a bitch. Because a Subaru Forester was put on this earth to govern the ungovernable. We knock on the Impreza fanboys while acknowledging that this shares a platform with its blow-off valve brother, Subaru Forester. For people who deny themselves post-nut clarity for an entire month. The world got its first look at the Forester in 1995 at the Tokyo Motor Show. By 1997, these were taking North America by storm, busting into the crossover SUV market if even the cross term crossover was invented back in 1997. I don't think so. I think these are just wagons. Yeah, look at this. This is not a crossover SUV. That comes later. This is a station wagon. While not as big as the legacy platform, this is still a great alternative. And for the second generation, which is what this is, uh, we got things like more cargo room. Fold the rear seats and you could get up to 64 cubic feet. And in 2004, you also had turbocharged options. Yeah, the turbocharged engine could get you as much as 224 horsepower, and it drank like a truck. What you're looking at here is a pre-facelift second-gen Forester, and when they went to the post-facelift one, the post-facelift one had some problems with the main headlights. Uh, the the, the pre-facelift ones, these ones, the headlights don't let water in. The, 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 the post-facelift second-gen Foresters did. While most Foresters are automatics, you can find them in manual, and of course, I looked for one. They shift kind of like trucks. The gears are kind of long, and, and I don't know if they're exactly the best option for learning stick shift because this is an all-wheel drive car that's locked in all-wheel drive all the time. So if you stall an all-wheel drive, these things jerk and stutter. It's riotous. It's violent when these things stall. When Foresters were new, they were marketed as a car for the young adventurous types who needed something that could engage their sense of adventure and wanderlust. 
but it ended up in the hands of older patrons seeking to recapture that sense of lost youth. It, look at it, it still looks sporty. The types who unironically say, youth is wasted on the young, as if the young don't deserve their youth. But why would that youth be any better used by the old? It's a weirdly judgmental phrase, as if to evaluate the merit of what young people do with their lives. There's nothing invalid about doing frivolous things in your youth. Hell, I wasted most of my 20s. No, I wasted all of my 20s. So if, in your, if, in your, if you're in your 20s right now and you feel lost, well, so did I. The 20s are your wandering years. At what age do most human brains finish forming? You know, at what age, do the, at what age does your prefrontal cortex, the average age when it finishes forming? 25. When do you think mine finished forming? Probably 30. So if, in your, so if you're in your 20s, you're allowed to do things and own things that serve no other function than your own happiness. A Subaru Forester is a car that reminds us of work because you can put this car to work just like we did. But it also allowed us to engage in things whose primary utility was our own wellness. Yes, picking up Appalachian Trail through hikers was helping them out, but it also helped me to get out from behind a computer desk. For Roman, it was a place to catch up on the happiness of each other's week as the caffeine kicked in on long drives to some remote shooting location. The feeling of a long journey ahead, a long journey behind, an adventure to Canada, or a trip taking us below the Mason-Dixon line. Yes, there is work in the DNA of all those experiences. But what the bloodstream of those trips carry is the reality that it couldn't have happened without a car as consistently reliable as Goldie. So. To you, 2004 Subaru Forester, five-speed manual. Thank you. You've done more than anybody could have asked for. We'll miss you. A breezy and chilly November day is in store across Pennsylvania. Scattered lake effect snow showers will continue to impact portions of northern and western Pennsylvania, with partial clearing expected farther to the southeast. High temperatures will range from the mid-30s in the Laurel Highlands to the upper 40s across the southeastern Piedmont. Lingering snow showers over northern and western Pennsylvania will gradually diminish tonight, with clearing skies elsewhere. Overnight lows will generally be in the 25 to 30 degree range, although the city of Philadelphia and the immediate Lake Erie shoreline could remain just above the freezing mark. Building high pressure will bring fair weather and lighter winds for Tuesday, with highs ranging from the upper 30s across the northern mountains to the upper 40s across far southwestern Pennsylvania and the southeastern Piedmont.